Thank you, Brother Mark. That was beautiful. I love to hear brethren who can play well on the piano, but not only to, just to play well, but to use their gifts for God's people. This is a continuing theme that I'm seeing throughout the Bible now. I was ta talking to Brother Given. Do you ever notice when the Lord opens something up to you, you start to see that throughout it just like sticks. It was always there before, but it just all like 3D just sticking right. It's like, I read this before, and now this is very large. God gives you a gift it is meant for his people. Don't be stealing stuff from God. When he gives you something, you better use it for what he intended it for. <clears throat> Brother Paul, he longed to see the brethren. That's kind of strong. Strong word that Brother Paul uses there. He's not, and he doesn't write just throwing stuff down on paper. Oh, this is going to sound pretty good. No, no, no. When he said, when Brother Paul says, I long to see you, this is very personal with him. And he's not, this is not something that he's, his heart is detached from this. His heart is in this. He really has a love for God's people. When, when you do and go through the things that Brother Paul went through, you will not do it for something that you don't believe in. He believed in what he was doing, and he really had a love for God's people. <clears throat> Without ever meeting them, he had this connection with them. Amen. The Bible calls them beloved of God. That's, that's who you are. God's people, you are the beloved of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Romans 1.7 says we're drawn together. We belong together. Mm -hmm. he, God is making a people not just to be together here. We've got brothers scattered all, all, the, all over the world. But we are, we are, the reason we're drawn together is because there's going to come a time where we are going to be together for eternity. Amen. There. Amen. And we're never going to go out again. Amen. I love to think about no more tears mm -hmm. in glory. And I remember I, I heard this, someone said this before. This isn't my own. Is that plagiarism? Who we talked about that earlier? Can I use that? <laughs> There's not going to be any tears in heaven because we don't need any tears. Amen. There's no need for them. Yeah. We have tears here because we have real suffering. Yeah. We have real suffering. We have real trials that we go through. But there's not going to be any need for tears there because there's not going to be suffering and we're not going to be going out anymore. We're going to be together. Yeah. But right now, for a time, for a while, we are separated. But that's not the way we like it. We don't want to be separated. Later, Paul, he will go on to explain why we have this strong attachment, attach, attachment to one another. It's because God has said we are one body. You'll find a couple of these as Romans 12, 4 through 5, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 20, and Ephesians 4, 4, one body. That's who we are. So there's no wonder why we're drawn together, Amen. why we love the brethren. Our life here is but a vapor, so we're making preparation. Paul sees this. He sees that the time is short. His love for the brethren is strong, so he longs to go be with these brethren. It is enjoyable to be with the brethren. You can find when you find true fellowship with someone who you may have never met them before, but it's our connection with Christ Jesus that we really connect. It's not something we have to make up. Not something we have to pretend. Paul's not pretending here. He's not a pretender. You read Paul's writings, you realize he's not a pretender. Yeah. He'll tell you exactly what's going on. And he is not making this up. He really 
has a desire for God's people. Now you know you notice that uh, this isn't this isn't the, the norm in the world. A love for others. Yeah. Now actually in the world they will tell you if you don't take care of yourself nobody will. Uh-huh. You gotta love what number one. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've heard that throughout my life and never sat well with me. That you got to take care of number one. See, this isn't the way it is in the kingdom. You don't have to worry about yourself in the kingdom. You have a love for God's people and God's people have a love for you. So you do the math. You could, you are one person. You could love yourself and take care of yourself. Or you could have a love that's a joyful love for God's people. And that number that cannot be numbered is going to come right back at you. You do the math. It's, it's, it's much better to not to worry about yourself, but to love God's people. So you see, see how what I'm talking about here when he says he, he longs to see them. See, if you're in the world, you, you may be like... Paul, you're already writing them a letter. What's, what's a big deal? I mean, it's going to take great effort to go see them. How, and I remember at this point, he says right before this, by any means. So he really doesn't even know how he's going to go see them. This is just by faith. He wants to be with them. He knows that this is God. God wants him to help them. So he says by any, any means. He doesn't even know how he's going to be there. But he wants to. Why? Why, can't, why isn't it just enough to write a letter? Today we have the internet. Why isn't it, not, why isn't it just enough that we could just, you know, inter, in, the internet, when you write, it's like a connection right away. Why isn't it just enough that we could just um, communicate with brothers around the world? Why do we have to send, send people all the way over to uh, Pakistan and India and Africa to go be with them? Because... There is a difference between writing, which writing is very powerful and is good to bless the brethren. We are being blessed by this letter that Paul wrote to the Romans today. That's powerful. But there is power in being with the brethren, seeing them eye to eye, connecting with them. So this is why he says, I long to see you. Can the body work well separated? Really, I mean, think about it. If we chopped up your body, would you do well? If we sent parts of you over here and parts of you over there, and, and you'd be like, you know, I was working a lot better when I was all together. Physically together. See, God gives us a picture of this with our own body. We work better when we don't cut our fingers off. When we have everything attached, it just works better. I mean, it doesn't take too much common sense to see that. It just works better together. This is why Paul said, I long to see you. You know, in the world, they may, say, they may just try to be nice and say, hopefully if our paths cross again, we'll get to see you again. Now, he, now that's not good enough for Brother Paul. That's not good enough for the brother. He longed to see them. See, because in the world, it's all about number one. But see, he wanted to be with the brethren, so he had a strong desire. When you have a strong desire like this, you will, be, you will want to do something about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And P- Brother Paul did something about it. He went to the Lord in prayer. Mm-hmm. By any means, he said earlier, This is what God want. This is what God wants is for His people to be together. Why He's gone through a grand work for us to be together there. This is what He desires. So Paul knows this. Paul longing to see the saints. This was a fellowship with Christ. First Corinthians one nine says. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, we're coming together in fellowship with Christ. When you meet together, 
You're coming together with Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. God does a work when his people come together in Christ. Now, there are large gatherings. They have very large gatherings all around the world. But we're talking about in Christ. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Mm -hmm. Acts 4.31. See, there, there's power, <coughs> and with power become, comes boldness. Now, God does give boldness. He gave boldness to Brother Stephen. But there is boldness when we come together. This happens when we are assembled together. It does make a difference when God's people are together. We see this, and I want to use this as an illustration because I love to see what a mighty, God, a, a mighty man of God that Brother Peter was. You know, we, we, uh, I just heard recently a, a, a preacher standing up for Peter, and this, I hadn't heard this in a while. It's just like you hit every time you turn around. Oh, that Peter, he's messed. Peter wasn't messing up all the time. Mm -hmm. Peter was a man of God, a rock. Yeah. He loved Christ so much that when an army was coming after him, he was ready to die for him. Yeah. He took out his 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 uh, his sword and, and and cut off Caiaphas' ear. He wasn't he wasn't going for the ear. He was going for the whole army. He just happened to hit the ear. He was going for every one of them because he wasn't going to let nothing happen to Christ. This is Peter. Now, I, I want to um, look at this Acts uh, 12, 5 through 12 there where he's in prison and he's, he's shackled, he's chained up and he's got these guards. Now, these guards, of course, you know, they are to their, if this guy gets away, he, they're dead. They are dead. So this is serious business. So he, he shackled up. And again, when you're in Christ, I want to point this out. That you, when you see that God is in control and that you're doing what is right, you can be, you can be chained up and be at peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peter is, he's, not, he's about ready to be killed here and he's not worried about this. Mm -hmm. He's not at all upset and, and wringing his hands. He's sitting there sleeping. And another thing I was thinking about is how this, uh, the angel came. And now angels, whatever you think about angels, when God sends them to do the work, yeah. they're not nice about it. They've taken out armies. Uh -huh. They're serious about the work of the Lord. When they're sent to do something, they're going to do it. Yeah. And I, I point this out because you go ahead and read what it says. That, that angel came down, and Peter's sleeping. What do you think smoke means? He went up there and gave him a little tickle. Wake up, Peter. He was there for business. He hit Peter upside the head. I don't know if he hit him upside the head. What did you say? He smote him on the side. We'll just stick with smote him on the side. I'm not going to make anything up here. He smote him on the side to get him going. He said, come on, get your shoes on. Get your stuff on. Let's go. I've got to work from the Lord that has to get you out of here. And that was the purpose of the angel. Because once they got out of there, the, the angel's gone. Yeah. But I just threw that in there because you see, this is, the angels see that this is serious business, what we're doing here. They, when God sends them on a mission, mm -hmm. they don't take it half-heartedly. Mm -hmm. This is serious. Like here, we're in a time right now, mm -hmm. this is serious business. Mm -hmm. For us to get to glory, there's no playtime right now. Yeah. When we get to glory, we're not going to leave ever again. But right now, we're in danger. Uh -huh. And there's no time to be asleep. Yeah, yeah. Alert and ready. Get your shoes on. Get ready to go. We're getting out of here. We don't know if Christ is coming back tonight. Uh -huh. We don't know if he's coming back tomorrow. But we know this. That when he comes back, we have got to be ready. Amen. We cannot be playing games. Yeah. So... This angel is serious about getting out of here. Get your stuff on. There's no time for introduction of what kind of angel I am. Let's just get out of here. Now, and now here's my whole point. 
of bringing this to you. What were the believers doing at this time? They were at Mary's house, gathered together, praying. That's right. Yeah. Were they praying for themselves? Were they praying for uh, Peter to get out there? They were praying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The point is, they were there together, mm -hmm. praying. Yeah. They were praying for Peter to keep him strong. Mm -hmm. And to keep him established. Yeah. That he may be strong when he's in prison. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Yeah. It gave him peace. Yeah. It worked. And now... Peter's out. And where does he go? He, he was in prison. He was about ready to be killed. The logical thing to be, you'd think, in the world is to run as far as you can and don't look back. What does he do? He goes to where the brethren are, are gathered together. He doesn't run past the house. He goes straight to the house to meet with the brethren. It was the body that was together praying that night. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the importance you see here, I'm, I want to develop here the, port, the importance of being with the body. That's right. Amen. Physically Amen. being with the body. Brother Paul, he loved the brethren and he wanted to bless them. He wanted to help them to see Christ and to keep their face, their faces focused, set their faces on the goal, the end that they may be established to the end. Paul viewed God's people the way Christ does. Yeah. This, brethren, is the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 This is the only mind that God accepts. That's right. Amen. Any other mind is not acceptable to God. A true love for God's people, Paul wanted to do what John 15, 16 said, bring forth fruit. He had a desire to bring forth fruit. How was that going to happen? They had to be established. They couldn't be weak in the faith. He wanted to strengthen them. You see, a, the important, a carnal mind is enmity against God, Romans 8, 7. A carnal mind doesn't think about the people of God, all it thinks is about is itself. Mm -hmm. It has no care for God's people. But, but Paul was, he, he had the mind of Christ, and he thought like Christ, and he wanted to go to be with God's people. This is why it says, he said here, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. He's talking about sharing with them what God had given him. Romans 1 8, Paul thanked God for their faith. And so, what's he want to do? He wants to add to it. Mm -hmm. He wants to help it along, help it grow. Mm -hmm. this, is a part of, this is a part of having the mind of Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Galatians 1 4. And it also says, Husbandmen, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and he gave himself for Ephesians 5.25. Not caring for his own life, he gave his life. Mm -hmm. So you have in the mind of Christ, this is what you, you give. You don't keep, you don't hoard as the world does, we, we give. What God has entrusted into you is not for you to keep for yourself, yeah. Yeah. but it's for the body to do God's will. It belongs to God. He gave it to you so that what? You could bless the brother. Yeah. Build up the body. Mm -hmm. And he's given everybody something. He's given you a mouth. Mm -hmm. He's given you ears to hear so that you could receive what God has said and then, re and then give it back to the brethren. Amen. See, this idea of, well, I don't know what I can do. No, 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 no. You have something to offer. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. Yeah, that's right. When you've come to the Lord, you have the Spirit of God working in you, and you have something to offer the brethren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may not think mm -hmm. what you have to offer, offer is something, but you're, that's not your place to think what you have to offer is something or not. Right, God gave it to you, and He wants you to distribute it to His people. Amen. Really, 
What does a dead man need? When he is tempted, he can say, I am dead. And my life is hid with Christ and God, Colossians 3.3. 3. Our life doesn't belong to me. I don't have any problem. I don't have any problem denying my own life because it doesn't belong to me anyway. My life belongs to God to give to God's people. Amen. The purpose of spiritual gifts is to benefit God's people. Amen. Your time, your mind, your whole being belongs to God. And it was given to you to do something with it. You are robbing God when you don't give what God has given you. If you're hoarding your time, if you're hoarding your life, you have stolen from God. Thou shalt not steal. There's a commandment that God gave us. Don't steal from God. What you have been given is to be distributed to profit the saints. In this way, you are a good steward. Yes. Amen. And you will, be, you will be rewarded for this. Our God is, see, not only does he give you to distribute, he rewards you for doing so. You had nothing. This is a good God. You had nothing. He gave you something. You, you distributed his, what he gave to you, and then he rewards you for it. Amen. As every man hath received a gift... Even so, minister the same one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do as of the ability which God has given, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be the praise and dominion forever and ever. First yeah. Peter 4. 10 through 11. You see, look, look at what it says here. Let him do it as of the ability which God gave you. Mm-hmm. God gave you the ability. That's right. It's your, what's, one of your jobs is to figure out what you have to give to the brother. I remember when I came here to this fellowship, I was very blessed by Brother Given and seeing he is he has has a love for the brethren and a desire to help. And he get, he's given his whole life to, to studying in the scriptures. And I remember I came here and Sister Barb was one of the first speakers I ever saw get up in front of all the brethren. And I saw for the first time, other than a uh, paid professional minister, for the first time I saw somebody make preparations other than just get up and babble something. She, bre- she came up with, a, with paper, and a, I could tell she had put some effort into this. Yeah. And, I, and I remember thinking, I want to be able to benefit the brother also. Amen. So I wondered, what could I do to benefit the brother? God opened up a door for me to do that. And not only here, we just got back from Florida not too long ago, and the Lord opened up a door there. See, I, I know that if you want to be used by God, and you give yourself to the Lord, He will give you something to bless the brother. Amen. He will. And he's, He did that with Brother Paul, and now Brother Paul, he has a great desire to give, and he did too. He gave. Amen. If God gives you the ability, He will not... He will, he will help you to use it properly. Amen. When you have a love and a desire for God's people, you will use it to help them. It, just this morning, we were just talking about uh, Fanny Crosby. She had this great gift to write things down, to put things in, in together in a way that, that was extraordinary. And she came to a point where she, she saw that she had to use this for God's people. So she, she, started, she put it into hymns that today we are being blessed by it. Yeah. You know, everyone needs food, like food, eat, to sustain themselves. Or else they're going to die. If you have food and you see somebody dying, I mean, this even, even ungodly people do this. You see somebody dying, they need some water, they're dying of thirst, and you, you just happen to be coming out of 
a restaurant or something. What, are you just not going to help this person? You're going to feed them. How much more spiritually yeah. for God's people? Yeah. Do you think it's wrong for you not to help God's people? Well, Brother Paul did. Yeah. He thought it was wrong. And he had something to offer. And he, he had this longing mm. to help God's people. Le living a, meek and, uh, a weak and meager life is not glorifying to God. And God, there's, there's God's people that are walking around today weak and meager and need to be fed while people that may have the ability to say and do something to bless them walk right by them. This is selfish and self-serving. Triumphant is the life of a believer living by faith in Christ. God will not allow his people to die from being, for not being fed. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch? He, yeah. he, sent, he, had, a, he had a desire. Mm -hmm. So God sent Philip to go and open up the scriptures to him. Yeah. Now, it, now, it didn't say where the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch went from there. Mm -hmm. But I have in my own mind that it didn't stop there. Mm -hmm. that, that after he opened up the scriptures, because he had a hunger for it, he went out and blessed the brother. Amen. Amen. So Brother Paul says, To the end mm -hmm. ye may be established. Amen. A good start's good, but we want to make it all the way to the end. Amen. Amen. Established. This is immovable. It can't be moved. Strengthened. Remember, we just got done talking about this firm foundation. You want to be connected to the firm foundation. Not wavering here and there when some strange doctrine comes in. You're like, oh, that sounds kind of good. Oh, that sounds... And then before you know it, you're like, you're down on the ground. And you're like, hey, I just got upside down. What happened? Because you weren't established. You were tossed to and fro. You're weak. You didn't understand the scriptures. And you weren't stuck. So, Brother Paul, he has a desire that, that God's people established. Yeah. That they're not going to be just like tossed to and fro. Amen. Paul said in Philippians 4 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and God of peace shall be with you. See, Brother Paul, he wasn't just one of those people who say, do this while he was doing something else. Okay. He, was a, he was doing it himself. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to help the brother. Because we don't belong here. Mm -hmm. we, we're not, we, we are being prepared. God is preparing us to be there. Yeah. This is not our home. Mm -hmm. we're, we're getting ready. This is our time of preparation. When you're making times of pe preparation to go somewhere, you're diligently getting things ready, gathering the ready. Yeah. What are you thinking about? I need this. I need. Mm -hmm. See, Brother Paul, he knows what they need, and he's wanting to go there to prepare them yeah. to go on. Yeah, that's right. He's not going there to prepare. When, so when, when he's talking about this spiritual gift that he wants for him, he, he's not talking about like, like something that has to do with here and now. Mm -hmm. Amen. This spiritual gift is, is a gift that's going to prepare them to go on. Amen. These are the words of life. Mm -hmm. Eternal life. He wants to talk about Christ. Mm -hmm. He wants to talk about what Christ has done. He wants to talk about how we're detached from this world. How we're making preparations to get out of this world. How together we stand strong because we're united. All these things. Paul's ready to go <laughs> impart into the brethren. This is the gift that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. That they may be established. That they may be strong in the faith. He knew this, and he wanted to share it with God's people. Paul didn't just, he didn't just tell others about how to live. He lived it in harmony with the truth. How do God's people become strong? It's because faith comes by hearing and hearing every word of God. You're not going to be strong without somebody preaching the truth. If somebody's preaching some other gospel, 
Something other than that God has, has given and shown us through Christ Jesus. That's not going to make somebody strong. Amen. That's right. Amen. They're going to fall away. Yeah. Paul was concentrating on the truth. Mm -hmm. Now Satan, he'll try to distract you to get you to concentrate on anything other than the truth. Because we know the truth will set us free. Mm -hmm. So what he does is he'll take the truth and kind of mix it together. You know there's metals that are very strong. And if you mix them with other metals or other things, they become weak. And, and, yeah. and they'll, they'll easily bend and break. Mm -hmm. See, this is what Satan's tactic is. He knows that yeah, we have the truth. He knows that, he knows that much. So what, what can he do now? What's he going to do with it? He knows the truth is out there. Well, his best, the best thing he could do is to bend the truth. Just like he did with Eve, he hasn't changed one bit. He's still doing the same thing. Yeah. Amen. So how important is it for us to know the truth? The, I mean, it's very important. Mm -hmm. We've got to have this right. And Brother Paul knows this. This will make you weak and make you open to falling away, to attack by the devil, if the truth is just a little bit off, just a little bit, Satan knows he's got an inroad there with you. You never want to get to the place where you think that you're just okay. Yeah. You know, I've gotten to, I've really gotten to this place where I just know all there is to know. That's when you're in trouble. If we are okay, and God loves us no matter what state we are in. Why does the scripture say? But the God of all grace who hath called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After the, that ye have suffered a while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. 1 Peter 5.10 he's, he's making you perfect and strengthening you. Not for no reason. It's because we are going to be attacked. It's because we're going to come under attack. His word's going to come under attack. The, the world can look like it's, there's going to be times where it looks like the whole world is going to be against you. So you've got to be perfect, established, and strengthened in the truth. If we are to get to glory, we must be established. The end is the point. When Christ retur returns, you want to be ready. Now, again, we don't know if that's going to be tonight. But if he does return tonight, or, or in the morning, or tomorrow, we want to be perfectly ready. We already want to have our bags packed and ready to go. Our shoes on. We want, we want to be ready to run. See, there's going to be people asleep at the time. They're disoriented. Christ comes, and he's gone. We don't want to be like that. We want to be those who, when Christ comes, we're like, this is the one I've been telling you about. Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> no one is going to stumble into glory. Yeah. It's, it's grace of God that we are called. By his grace, we're going to be kept. We have got to be strong in establishing the truth. If we are drawn away from God, we will not make it. We're going to die. And there's all manner of ways to get you off. So our job is to stay on track, Amen. is to keep our focus. It's the Lord who is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, which tells me I want to detach what, I mean, again, there's no, we can't make up a bunch of rules with this. This is, you're working, this is working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Find out what you need to get rid of mm -hmm. that you may stay close to Christ Jesus. Yes, because you're not getting in without Christ. Amen. It's God who established you and keep you from evil. Paul wanted God's people to be established because if they were not, they did not grow strong. And have done with lesser things, they would fall back mm -hmm. and they would not make it. That's one of the things that is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. That in Christ you will make it, out of Christ you won't. Yeah. It's the Lord who is faithful. Mm -hmm. 
Without Jesus, no one's getting in. God's people must be grounded. This comes from God's word. This comes from, uh, from preaching the word by preachers who know how to put it together. Who know how to strengthen God's people. If you don't eat, you will die. This is, this is you know, everybody can understand that. You go a long time without eating, you die. Same thing in the spirit. You go a long time without meeting with the brethren, without being built up, without being strong, you will die. We look to Jesus who would not be moved. When he was tempted, remember, for 40 days, and the devil said to him, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones that they be bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God, Luke 4.4. 4. You, you, you can't go on without being strengthened. And Brother Paul knew this. Brother Paul loved the brethren, and he wanted to go there and give them a gift. That's, this is the gift he's talking about. There are people who go to church every Sunday. But if you ask them, when was the last time they had a real good meal? I'm talking about spiritually being built up and strengthened. That when they walked out of service, Christ was what they were thinking about. Being prepared to get to glory was what they were thinking about. Getting, getting everything out of their lives that had nothing to do with God and being close to Christ. This is the, the good meal I'm talking about. If you ask them, when was the last time you had a good meal? Some of them, they go to church every day, every Sunday faithful, would make, look at you like you're crazy. Have no idea what you're talking about. What are you talking about? I just had a good meal this morning. He might say to you, we're talking about being built up in the spirit here. In Christ, we become a new creation. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord, 2 Corinthians 3.18. See, there is no sitting still. You sit still, I don't care if you've been going to a good fellowship for your whole life. But you are not partaking of the meal. You will die. I know this from my own children. My wife, she is a good cook. She can prepare a good meal. But if we don't feed the baby who doesn't know how to feed himself... We know that we, he will die. That's right. and, who, and we're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because authority is going to come after us and say, why didn't you feed that baby? Right. We got babies today, brethren, who are not being fed. Mm -hmm. right. You think God takes this lightly? Mm -hmm. When God has given you a word to say and you hold it back from, the, from God's children, mm -hmm. you're going to be accountable for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. When God has shown you a truth, and you haven't figured out a way to give it to the brother, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah. Amen. This is serious stealing from God. Amen. So if God's people aren't being fed, if they're, if they're not being strengthened and built up and you don't see them growing, there's something wrong. Yeah. Somebody's not doing their job. Yeah. Somebody's laying down on the job and God takes this seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, the angel, when he was sent to do a job, he was serious about it. He didn't care if Peter was sleeping. It was time to get up and go. That angel was serious about the work. See, Brother Paul's got a work to do, and he's serious about it. Yeah. He, by any means, I'm gonna, I want to get to you, brethren, and to bless you. I'll give you a spiritual blessing. Yeah. This is the way it is for all believers. God has given you a mouth, given you ability to speak what he has shown you. It's our job to get it out, Amen. to bless the brother. Amen. Amen. Before the Lord returns, this must change or people will die. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking We're talking about eternal life here. Mm -hmm. People will die and not, not, they will not be, this is serious, that people will be cast into hell. It doesn't get any more serious than that. So before the Lord returns, God's people must be built up and strengthened. Brother Paul sees this, and we must see it too. We must see that this is not a time to be slothful, 
even if you, you know, there is going to be times where you don't want to get out of bed, but you know you got to do it anyway. You're, this, you got to tell yourself, listen, it doesn't matter what you want. Flesh, get back on the cross. I got a work to do. Yes. People are dependent on you because you are a part of the body. Yes. So, Brian and I, I pray that this bless you. I know it blessed me. Yes, amen. It blessed me to see that God, ha what I have to offer is important. And what you have to offer is important too. Brother Paul saw that. And he didn't want to let anything hinder him from getting the work done. Let us also not let anything hinder us from getting the work done. Thank you, brother.